Amazon businesses. They're a beast that we love, but as business owners, we also really hate them. Hey, this is Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Business Podcast, and in this episode, I'm sharing with you part one of a training we did in our Inner Circle Mastermind with Mike Jackness from Ecom Crew on how to take an Amazon business off Amazon. And we specifically talk about black hat and white hat strategies for Amazon businesses. Then we dive in to talk about the risk with being reliant on only Amazon sales and what you can do to remove those risks. Mike also has a really awesome rant here, which is totally fair and something that you don't want to miss because it is very valuable. We also talk about how to optimize and why you should always be optimizing your listing. Then we talk about what you can do if your Amazon listing is actually taken down and so much more. Guys, this is such a valuable episode. If you are thinking about buying an Amazon business or you own an Amazon business, you can't miss this one. Today's episode is brought to us by Niche Website Builders, which is a company a few of my clients are using and have used for content creation and link building services. They do everything from start to finish. So from keyword research all the way to uploading your completed article for you. We've also had Bob members buy ready-made affiliate sites built by Niche Website Builders. So if you're looking to outrank your competitors' content and build better backlinks, Niche Website Builders and I have a special deal for you. Head to nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. But again, that's www.nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob. Do you want to start investing in websites but don't want to drop $20,000 or more on your first investment? Check out Odis, where you can buy premium age domains to build a website on and add Odis done for you affiliate site package to help you grow your website and get seen. Instead of buying a crummy website that's been built to sell with no authority, buy a premium domain with built-in authority, great SEO, and fresh quality content for your website. Head to odys.link forward slash Bob podcast to check out their great deals. That's O-D-Y-S dot L-I-N-K forward slash B-O-B podcast. Link will be in the description too. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for coming on. I'm really looking forward to this and talking about Amazon business and, and even getting off Amazon. You're on the podcast, how long ago now? It must have been like 100 episodes ago or something. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't. It's all a blur to me. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I can't, I'm not good at is uh, trying to remember where I was last week or last month or last year. So it's all a blur, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time. How many, how many interviews have you been on? You're like, well, how many do I do a week and with who? And it's, it is a blur, isn't it? It's crazy. Dozens and dozens. And even, even through COVID, it, it's still a blur because they all, it, it's a, getting on a plane and doing them, they were on Zoom like this. And so, yeah. uh, which was more convenient, but still, still hard to keep track of them all. Yeah, it is. So I, I wanted to get you to come on and talk about actually running Amazon businesses and growing Amazon businesses, but also like, how do we actually get off Amazon and 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 why? Because like there's some real risks of being on Amazon alone and generating 100% uh-huh. of our income on Amazon alone. So what are some of those risks that people should be aware of if they're Amazon business owners? Well, I feel like it's also binary, right? Like you're either selling on Amazon or you're not. Like one day you're ASIN suspended or even worse, your whole account is suspended. And so to me, the, the, the real risk come at that level, the other stuff is the same risk you have in any business or in life where you know, competition starts eating away your sales or there's margin erosion or these other things. These are things you can plan for and, and see coming and, and adapt to. The, the ones that are really difficult that have caused us the most pain has, has been the, the ACE Center account level shutdowns where, again, it just you think you're, you go to bed thinking everything's fine and dandy. You're making thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, and then you wake up and that number zero, while you have, in our case, at our peak, we have $1.3 million in inventory, 26 employees to take care of, and all these other pain points that you're having to constantly deal with. And so there's a lot of things in business where things can be binary, but with Amazon, it feels like it's so much out of your control and it can oftentimes be for something that you legitimately haven't done wrong. And that's where it feels very unfair and uh, and, and stressful, but you know that's the, the game that we're playing, and, and we all kind of know it getting into it. 
yeah, it's 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 wild that it's it, there's a cool thing with Amazon is like they've got a bunch of people with high intent, hungry buyers. They're going on there with their intention of purchasing something, but we don't own that audience, which is crazy. And the same things happen. I was talking with Matt, who's here on the call, uh, like a couple of months ago. It's like, oh, Jared, my my Amazon account got shut down and lost 25 grand in sales for a day, you know, like it's, and that's pretty regular. And what we are, uh, like what I'm teaching people to do throughout due diligence as well is like yeah. work out, like how often does that happen? And what's the revenue loss? So you can factor that in when you're purchasing a business too, which is, which is cr- quite critical. So Absolutely, yeah. what, are, what are some of the things that you have seen or either done for yourself just kind of like, prevent some of these risks from happening? Well, I think it's hard to prevent the risk from happening. I think you can help diversify your business and, and be able to survive it better, but you're short of not doing black hat stuff, which is, I think, where the risks really come in. Like, I mean, it's just, uh, it's like playing Russian roulette. Hmm. Uh, you know, you might win $100,000 for that pull of the trigger, but there also might be a bullet in the chamber. And so the white hat, black hat, gray hat, risk to reward equation is is quite real. And in the moment that you're doing it, it feels like it might not be that big a deal. But again, there could be a bullet in the chamber. And so I think to to de-risk your, yourself trying to get into a hundred percent or as white hat as possible business model, I think is is really the best way to do that. And we can talk about some of the things that we've done to to really try to to navigate those waters because if you don't do some of the stuff that we've done to position ourselves, then you're, you're really forced to do black hat things to compete. And the excuse of everyone else is doing it. So I had to, is not going to work very well with Amazon uh, if and when they suspend your account. And, you know, depending on what you've done, how bad you've sinned, uh, most things you'll get a pass the first time you can, you write a plan of action and get on ban, but then you're on kind of high alert and certainly don't want to be doing any of those things a second time. And so, again, how do you position yourself in a way that prevents you from having to even do these things in the first place, I think, is is probably part one of the, of the question here. Oh, for sure. So you're obviously talking about black hat and white hat within on Amazon itself, right? Yeah. I mean, like the black hat stuff is search, find, buy, or super URLs, or review groups, or sabotaging your competitors, which is even... More than yeah. black hat, that's just totally freaking dirty, which yeah. we just went through a whole phase of that ourselves, uh, dealing with that. Uh, with how we, we just recently just got some Mason suspended and it was because of that. And it, it just, it's so hard to even find out what's happening there because it's like trying to find someone on Amazon that has a brain to help you is, is another another challenge. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we've, but, we've had that in our group as well, where Austin here is like, sort of work out a formula of like how how many times do I need to get on the phone and how long do I need to wait before I speak to somebody that's actually going to help me get my listing live again, which is it's horrible. I mean, I, I, I have this new thing where I, it doesn't seem to ever work, but I can't help but say it. But when I do get on the phone with someone at Amazon, they're like, just be patient. That's in the internal team. They're, they're working on it. Uh, I'm like, well, how long would, would you be patient for if you didn't get your paycheck on Friday? Would you go down there Friday afternoon, Monday morning? Would you wait a couple of weeks before your next paycheck didn't come through. Like how long would you wait before you were totally losing your freaking mind? That's where I'm at right now. My ASIN has been closed for three weeks or four weeks or whatever it is. And you're telling me to be patient. Mm. Meanwhile, like you're still charging me for storage fees. Your in-house brand is competing against me selling this product. I mean, you know, and you're asking me to be patient. Unfortunately, it never goes anywhere, but I had to vent. Uh, <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's where you're stuck. And again, I mean, we all know this. And the thing is, the thing that I've also accepted that's a bad place to be in life also is just the fact that like, I know this is the abuse I, I'm going to take now and in the future. And yet there's enough money to be made there that I'm going to continue to put up with this abuse. It's uh, not the best business model, <laughs> but but here we all are. And uh, there's still a lot of gold up in them hills. And so we all got our shovels and pickaxes and we're, we're trying to go find it. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> It is that it is that game. Like everybody is aware that you know these things. Are, we should expect them to happen. Maybe not three weeks. That's a kick in the pants, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear that because that is seriously. It was an extraordinarily long, out of the ordinary time. But yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it it happens. Matt, have you got something to add there? Yeah. Hey, Mike. Matthew here. Hey, Matt. Hey, uh, my question is 
from your experience, is there a certain level of uh, of a seller that gets to a, a certain point where they get better access to someone in Amazon, whether it be an account manager, you know, like these big companies like L'Oreal or something or Kellogg's, for example, you know, did they get special treatment or is it just sort of like one size fits everybody no matter what? Yeah, I, it's funny that you mentioned that because I actually asked that question. I literally said like, you know, we're, we've sold $10 million of this stuff a, a year on Amazon. Like at what level do I need to sell before you actually give a crap about me where I can get an actual response? And so the answer isn't 10 million because we, we had been at 10 million before we sold our last company and got the same treatment you're getting. You're right, L'Oreal obviously does get better treatment of some sort. I know people who are selling 25, 35, 50 million dollars on Amazon still in the same bucket. They do have uh, the SAM program, the strategic account manager. I'm not, no, if you, I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. And supposedly like that is supposed to help solve some of these issues. And base price for that last time I checked was $1,500 a month. And it escalates uh, based on your sales volume. And there's nobody that I know that has kept their SAM for more than like two to two and a half years. Eventually they all just get rid of them because what it's supposed to do is be there to help you with these types of situations and have someone that you can talk to who's intelligent that's going to help you. But the reality is they always say, well, I can't help you. It's an internal team. And so they usually end up giving up. The, the one thing that the, the SAM helps you with is some of the deal of the day programs that are exclusive to those things. But the reality is, is that everyone that's, on this call and anyone listening, we're all in this bucket together of, they don't really care about us. And, and here's the way to think about it and, and the reason why, and, and the reason why it's not going to change. When when we first started selling Amazon in, in 2015, we were oftentimes the first ones to sell a particular product. You know, we, I'll give you an example. We, we sell round ice packs and like these little rectangular ice packs for like heat and cold therapy. There's, there's a few products that we had that we were literally the very first ones that ever sold them on Amazon. And in that situation, they need us way more than we need them, right? I mean, like, yeah, it was a great place to sell, but this is like the evolution of any type of business where there's a time where they need you and they needed us to, to put that product on Amazon to be the first ones to help fill their, fill their marketplace. They needed us to help build their infrastructure with their warehouses and their, their planes and their trucking and all these different things that we all helped subsidize to, to build. Now it's the other way around. There's 30 people selling the exact same product and their warehouses are full. Their infrastructure is like basically built out almost to probably to capacity. And uh, I always use this analogy of like the Hoover Dam where someone fell to their death and there was 20 other people waiting to take that job, no matter how dangerous it was. Uh, so they didn't need OSHA or any standards because that's where it was. And, and now that's the way it is. You get suspended on Amazon and those little ice packs that we sell. Yeah. For us, it's the world, you know, we're, we're screwed. We can't sell our product, but Amazon doesn't give a shit because someone's typing in small ice packs or ice packs for lunch boxes or whatever. And they're just going to go buy the competitor. They, they still make their 15%. And so their motivation as a company you know, this is obviously like where capitalism kind of gets evil and bad, but they don't care. Like, and so as much as we all think it's unfair, we want it to change. It doesn't make any sense to us and all these different things that like evoke us emotionally. If you think about it as a fly in the wall on Amazon and their motivation, they legitimately have no motivation to really help make this better for us because they aren't losing anything when this happens. It doesn't affect them negatively at all. And so there's no motivation to make it better. And so just keep that in mind. I mean, I think that's something we all have to accept or go find another way to make a living. Go ahead, you have another question, please. So that leads me to my follow-up question, uh, Mike, and that is that, so what did you end up doing to mitigate the risk of Amazon by moving off Amazon? So what was your, what was your uh, strategic play there? And perhaps mm -hmm. can you extend that into what do you foresee now into the future as well in your business and what you're doing? Yeah, so one of the things that, the, that we've really been working on is, is content off Amazon. I have a background in this. It's what I started doing when I left my day job in 2004. Uh, and it took a while for me to kind of put the two pieces together because I was doing SEO and content marketing and those types of things uh, back then. And then I got into e-commerce around uh, 2012, 2013 and just kind of dropped all that. It was, oh, well, now I'm doing PPC and Facebook ads or, you know, selling on Amazon, selling on Shopify, you know, just doing all these different disciplines that, and I just kind of left the other thing behind. And at some point around 2016-ish or whatever, 
I started putting it all together. And, and now it's really our big initiative is to work on off Amazon assets that can really help our Amazon business. And so it, it completes a couple of objectives. I mean, it, it helps us do better on Amazon, which is still our main focus. It's still 57% of the market. It still converts. Some of our products convert. If you look at your session percentages, for us, 50%. 55, 60% on some of our best selling items. Like our worst performing items are like 35%. So you start talking about like selling on Shopify, 1%, 2% conversion rates. You know, it's Amazon still you know, very lucrative. But the thing that I love about having these content assets is they allow me to change the dial. And so if I had the nuclear Holocaust uh, option, like where Amazon just gets blown up completely, I now I can drive that traffic somewhere else. I can drive it to my own Shopify store, the eBay to Walmart and survive, right? It's always about survival. Can I, when musical chairs stops playing, can, do I still have a place to sit down? And as someone who's been in business for myself since 2004, as I mentioned, I mean, it's never all up and to the right and always shiny, shiny roses. I mean, there's, there has been some really dark times, but the thing that's helped us survive through all these different things over the years is having, having ways out. And I like, I like having these ways out. And again, we'll be also, and we'll talk more about the content and things that we're working on there. But it's also incredibly white hat. Like Amazon will never look at what we're doing there and say what you're doing is, is black hat in any way. Like they're never going to like raise an eyebrow and say, "Oh, this is this is wrong. We're going to suspend you for for this activity." Because at the end of the day, it's what they really want. You know, they want traffic off Amazon. They're looking at outside traffic as a high ranking factor. There's been lots of tests and things that have been talked about there about this, and so we know this for sure. And it makes sense because you know, if you think about Amazon has a search platform. They become the number one e-commerce search engine. They're bigger than Google. But you know, there's also searches that happen off Amazon. A lot of the top of funnel searches, the, the what, why, where, when type questions or how, you know, how do I uh, build a fence or how do I get my dog to sit or whatever. And so you get on some article and it like wants to sell you some treat and then that gets you off on Amazon buying that treat. Like that's all still Google's domain, right? And so... Amazon's really going to look at that traffic and always rank it very high when there's all these outside signals away from Amazon pointing towards this product that also produces sales. That's always going to be a very high ranking factor for Amazon, in my opinion. And so I think that this is a the new, you know, kind of like the Wayne Gretzky code, where's the puck going? You know, having these types of off Amazon assets and having control of them, I think can be invaluable moving forward. And so that's the thing that we've been working on now uh, for, for the last like three years. Yeah, I think it's great because when we, when we talk about risk of being on Amazon, the best way to reduce or minimize your risk is have more control. Like the less mm -hmm. control you have in your business or in your life, like the more risky it is. So Absolutely. you were talking about some white hat things you do on Amazon. Uh, I want to touch on that and then sort of move into like what you're doing in terms of content off Amazon to drive people to your own e com store. So yeah, what are some of those white hat things you are doing on Amazon that helps you? Well, it's the, the white hat stuff is really all the, the off Amazon things that we're doing. I mean, the stuff that's white hat on Amazon is like we, well, let's start with actually that because I think it's really important. It's often the thing that, that people really just skip over for whatever reason I see happen often, which is really building the perfect listing. I don't know what it is about this, but people will spend all this time developing a product and they stress over like pennies on the shipping or logistics and every other thing in between, but they kind of half-ass it when it comes to putting their listing together. You know, they, they have subpar imagery or info, I call them like little mini infographics. You know, you, you get seven images, you don't add video, you don't have enhanced brand content, you haven't done the keyword research. This is like the basic white hat block and tackling thing that if you're going to spend time on something, you should spend time on that first, absolutely first. When you walk into a retail store, and you got a question, you can ask somebody, whatever questions you have, they might not be knowledgeable, but you can at least ask the questions of whatever it might be. I mean, even for a simple product, like an iPhone case, like does this fit this particular iPhone or whatever it might be, you can ask the question because you're there. You can look at it, you can touch it, you can you know put it on your phone and take a look at it. Am I going to like this? Online, you have none of that, right? And so your job as a Amazon seller or just e-commerce seller in general is to be able to communicate everything you possibly can about that product through your listing, whether it's on Amazon or on Shopify. I know that this sounds so basic, but again, 
we spend a lot of time on this, like every week, like we just never, like we are never done. Like we have a, a army of people in our office that this is all they do. And so we're constantly trying to make our listings better. And we constantly look at cause and effect. And so we just did these updates to this listing. What was the conversion rate, you know, the session percentage? What's the new percentage? Can we go from 35% on average to 37%? You know, those two points doesn't sound like much, but you know, it's like an 8% gain or whatever that works out to. And at the end of the day, you know, the A9 algorithm, which is, you know, there's there's some parts that are very known about it. Sales, your conversion rate is what matters more than anything else. So someone types in iPhone 12 case, black, whatever, and they come to your listing, they don't buy, they go to the next listing, they don't buy, they buy your listing, you know, that's going, that's your conversion rate, obviously. And so how do you rank higher than your competitor for iPhone black 12, iPhone case, whatever? In generalities, all things being equal, the rankings basically based on like who's converting best for that particular keyword over the next person. There are other factors, right? There's, it's more than just that, but again, the, the base of the AI algorithm is can you, can you out convert your competitor for that search keyword? And so that's the most white hat thing you can do is go spend time making a better listing. And I promise you, you're never done. You might think you have great photos and great content on there, but you can do better. And you can learn to do better by like looking at what your competitors are doing. Another thing that we do is we found that like, because we're always the market leader with these things is that everyone copies us, which we've just gotten used to. And so you go search for small ice packs or whatever, where, you know, we used to be the only one there or our listing really stuck out. Everyone copies our main image. And so now the whole page looks the same. And so one of the things that we tell our, our team when we're going through this project on a continuous basis is look at our main keywords, look at the results page. How do we stand out on that page from everybody else? And so we've done some really strategic things. One of the biggest ones is by adding our packaging in our main photo a lot of times. And we design our package in advance with those results in mind. And so, you know, it might be a sea of blue. Everyone's now made blue ice packs as they've all copied our ice packs. It's all the same thing. Well, now our package is in the listing with this big red banner and big font, like three by five ice packs in, in red. You can't miss it. And now our listing like pops out and eyeballs gravitate towards there, increases our conversion rate, keeps us doing better than our competitors. They'll copy that. We'll come back six months later, but we constantly are innovating. We'll make a green label or thing across it instead. And it's all TOS compliant. And again, we're looking at our secondary images, doing keyword research, looking at what did we do? Did it have a positive or negative effect? And so we'll let it run for a few weeks because we don't want some short-term variance to have us make a bad decision. Go back and look at the conversion rate, session percentage, did it increase? Great, let's go do more of that for our other products that a decrease, oh shit, like, let's put it back and <laughs> go back to the drawing board. But in terms of white hat stuff, I mean, that's the base block and tackle stuff that a lot of people just give up on. They all want, everybody wants the secret pixie dust you're gonna go sprinkle on and put this no effort into it and go make a million dollars. And that just doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah, if you've been you know, in business for any number of years, you know, this 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 that stuff doesn't exist. And yeah, we can we can completely t- like agree with that. Like Austin here has gone away and bought an Amazon business and has just changed the listing with images. It's just made it so good. And one of his strategies is what we're looking at is taking those images and putting them on his site, which is going to help his conversion rate on his site and sell them off off Amazon, uh, which is one of his and creating content as well through blogs, which is already he's already gone away and done. So we can start generating that that search engine traffic. I wanted to ask you, what are some of the thing, other things that you guys are doing off Amazon in terms of white hat to, to gain more traffic and maybe even optimize your listings on your own, say Shopify or e-commerce platform? Yeah, so the, the off Amazon stuff, again, all revolves around blog content. So we own a few, quite a few now content sites. The, the big flagship one we talk about a lot is we own tactical.com. We also own a tactical brand. And so you were writing content you know, trying to, to, to do the hard work, right? The long game, rank for a whole bunch of various organic terms, top of funnel, middle of funnel type terms, get people on our email list, uh, pixel them, excuse me, so we can run ads to them, eventually build lookalike audiences. This type of stuff is like a, you know, at the beginning, it's like one snowflake at the top of the mountain. It really makes absolutely no difference. And it's very difficult to stay motivated to continue to do it. 
because you're investing a lot of time, money, and energy into it. Uh, even when you have a hundred snowflakes or a thousand snowflakes, it doesn't do much. But eventually, enough snowflakes fall off the top of that mountain that it, someday it produces an avalanche, right? And you start to really gain momentum. And we've really hit our stride with a, a lot of these things now, which has been a lot of fun. I mean, it's been again, it's been many years in the making because we started talking about this back in, in 2017. And so, you know, if you can pick a narrow subject and become one of the best content spots on the internet for this stuff that also is related to your product, you can get people that are, that are constantly searching for these things on, on Google uh, or maybe Yahoo or Bing. <laughs> uh, but let's, say, let's face it, mostly Google. Yeah. Um, and, and capture them early on in the process. I mean, all of us are constantly focusing on it. It's a day, of, a time of instant gratification. I, I'm just as, I'm talking hypocritically here. I'm just as guilty as this, right? You want to be able to do something and see results 10 minutes later. I think that those things are, are very difficult. Most people, again, are not willing to put in the work to, to put together great content and, and drive this stuff. And, and we, we have been, and I also have a background. And so I was able to take that blind leap of faith in, in doing this. And so again, top of funnel stuff, like what should I have in my bug out bag or how do you prepare for emergencies or how to prepare for a hurricane or you know, things that people might not be looking to buy something right at that moment. 10 awesome projects you can do with, with Paracord or you know, whatever it might be. These are not things you're looking to buy to buy right now, mm. but the top of funnel or the bottom of funnel conversion type terms are like, what are the best tactical gloves? What is the best tactical flashlight? These types of things or whatever. If you can rank for those things and have product comparison type stuff, people that are right there at that purchase decision time will go buy it. And the thing that I love about this content strategy you know, all the products that we develop now pretty much have a, I, I don't want to jinx myself, but they're like 100% success rate when we launch. Because what we've done is we write content, we get traffic to a page, we have affiliate links going to Amazon to our future competitors' products, but we use them for data research and mining, right? We see those products selling. We know we're selling five 10, 15, 20 of these things a month. It doesn't take much, sometimes 50 a month, whatever, but it's outside traffic signals that, that Amazon loves. So then we know we're selling this product. We can see it black and white right on the screen. Well, let's go develop our own version of this product. We've already done all the preliminary research, right? Because we bought what we, what we do, we actually do it the right way, which is why our content does rank. We go buy all the competitors' products. We actually do it right. You know, a lot of these content sites are just like, they take the screenshot off of Amazon, write 10 sentences of basically copy and pasting their bullet points and try to put together a review, which I think is BS. We go buy it. We send it off to the Philippines, which is where our team's at. They go use all the products. We take all our own original photography. We put together a legitimate review of these products. At the same time, we take note the same way that we would if we didn't have this strategy. If we were developing our strategy to develop new products is always to buy our competitors test the stuff out and see where we can improve, read their reviews, like all the stuff that people talk about all the time. So we do all this, but we make really great content out of it. And now we also got all the competitive research done in advance. We know what we want to do when we want to develop a new product. And when we see the traffic coming to that page, now we go develop our own product and our product magically becomes the number one recommended choice for that thing. And we send that traffic off there and we have very white hat traffic boost of a brand new product it hasn't it's, failed us yet it's a, it's what i really want to highlight for people that are in the in the mastermind right now and specifically in the mastermind but also people that are listening to this is i hope that you just really picked up on what the real asset is that mike has just described it's not the product it's the audience He's yeah. built an audience of people that are in that particular niche that are hungry to solve their problems in that particular niche, whether it be, you know, tactical knives or fishing or whatever it is. He's built an audience of people that are invested in that niche. So even when you build an email list, you can do a survey and you can launch a product with complete confidence that people that actually have money and yeah. actually want to purchase it versus I'm just going to put a bunch of blog posts out there to get traffic, come to my site and do the short-term win, which is not really a, much of a win of trying to sell my product on just because I've got a product here already. Like you're actually creating a really superior business by 
solving people's problems with multiple products and de-risking your business at the same right time, right, Mike? Yeah. That's it for part one of this episode with Mike Jackness. Now, you can find more on Mike and what he does over at ecomcrew.com and there'll be a link in the description. In part two of this training, Mike talks with us about how to build attention and audience and trust and actually make sales off Amazon with content. He also talks about how to make money with content websites for Amazon FBA businesses and doing it the right way. Then we dive into some email marketing strategies that actually made Mike a bunch of money without him selling a thing in either of those emails. And we also talk about what Mike shares with us, which is his single best thing he's done in business that has helped him make far more money with far less stress. And lastly, we chat and answer more mastermind member questions. Now, if you want to access part two of this training or any of our other trainings in the inner circle, you can join the mastermind by going to buyingonlinebusinesses.co forward slash inner circle. See you guys. Hey, YouTube watcher. If you thought that video is good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out, it's an awesome playlist, you'll enjoy it.